Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. All right, here we go. Uh, it's time once again for a, another uh, observation vlog. It is, well, basically, it's uh, zero minutes and zero hours into the third day of November uh, 2021. It is freezing cold out here. It's very frigid. The wind is not so bad, so but I got my gloves on. I've got uh, uh, extra layers on, and so I'm okay. Um, well, once again, I just finished listening to Lionel. Uh, it did some perusing around today and just sort of uh, to check some of the things I was thinking about. Uh, some of them were incidental. I found things I didn't wasn't necessarily looking for, but uh, none of the, nonetheless, they were kind of, if you will, fruitful. Uh, this is where we bring in the observation of Lionel to understand that Lionel is not fully red-pilled. He's been red-pilled, but not the point where he needs to be because he's still within the matrix. And he doesn't seem to understand this. He, he's still within the matrix. Uh, a person will ha who is in who's outside the matrix will understand that, oh, yes, of course, the left-right paradigm is a work. It's not real. It uh, was a creation. But, uh, but then again, he dismisses Gnosis. Because what happens is that the left-right paradigm was creation, created by Gnosis. This was the Hegelian dialectic. Hegel was an agnostic. And particularly the, the type of Gnosis we're talking about, we're talking about pagan Gnosis, about outside of the early Christianity. And I think that this is where, what brings in some of the understandings that, uh, that Lionel misses. Without morality, and this is, this is sort of what happens with Voltaire, who brought up the whole concept of moral relativity, uh, the Constitution falls apart. Because the Constitution is based on morality. Without morality, you have no Constitution. And this is what we're going through right now, this existential crisis, is because there is no morality. You've eliminated it. So how do you go out and say somebody, somebody that's wrong when you say, well, morality is relative? You can't. So a large chunk of the consequences that we're seeing today is because of Lionel sent, you know, this is common to all these different people. Were involved. But again, doesn't don't, don't, they don't see their own they don't see their own hand in this. They don't see that they're part of the problem. And what it is is that the morality does matter. It does matter who is being killed. It does matter if you're going to defend life. And the whole concept of the Constitution is not again, this is what a lawyer does. A lawyer picks at very specific literal understandings of the um of the Constitution. There is no uh, sort of a, a, a we'll call it, he calls it nuance, but there's no further understanding than that. They take it at a lit, at almost at a literal sense, so that if one sentence is wrong, if one comma is in the wrong place, well, that's a technical mistrial. This is how Hillary Clinton uh, was able to, uh, to sort of defend uh, a, a pedophile who, who he admittedly raped a girl, but because there was a 12-year-old, Technically, because there was there was a problem, there was an issue uh, with the trial. The whole trial was thrown out as a mistrial, so he got off scot free. And the thing is, th this whole adversarial system within the legal system again, that's Hegelian. That's the Hegel Hegelian dialectic. The whole purpose of Gnosis, particularly on the left, uh, and I'm talking about left hand path, the evil path, is about conflict. Is about creating the conflict. And the conflict, the the thesis versus the antithesis, the violent clash, the violent outcome, and this could be verbally violent. It could be, in many cases, very unsettling. That's what they consider to be progress. And you go into history, you begin to understand that this understanding of progress is extremely violent. And as I said before, what happens with Hitler? When people who talk about, oh, this is this is a lot like Nazi Germany. Well, yes, it is. You have certain degrees within Nazi Germany. You, the uh, Max Kaiser and his guests were talking about uh, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, stagflation in the 1970s. Yes, that's true as well. Uh, there is that resemblance, but there's also the resemblance as IMF came up with this uh, as a, with an, an an analogy that we're heading into the Great Depression. 
And this is bared, was brought out by one of his guests, uh, Max Kaiser, and that we are going into a significant economic problem. That, and what happens is that what's going on in the news, in the, in the public, public eye, is basically theater. But the thing is, we know that the mainstream media, that, that, that we, this is why we call it in many cases, political theater. Politics is theater. It's never about reality, it's about perception and how you perceive the person who's running for office or how you perceive the person who is in office. There is this creation, a work, a LARP, if you will, where the scenario is you create this person who is whoever's in office or wants to get out as being the better choice. And this is what's being done with, the, the, uh, with Donald Trump now. Biden's, you know, having a problem and uh, of course, the, the, these memes come out and <coughs> and you have Biden without understanding that it's not simply Biden, it's, this, it's the system. So even if Trump does get in there, he's not going to repair the United States. He's not going to make the United States better because the problem with the United States is an American problem. It's an internal problem. It's, it's the, how people behave. You can only change behavior with behavior. And right now, the behavior that's being displayed on either side of the aisle isn't exactly what we need. So, you know, Trump is not going to repair the United States. It's that simple. Why would you vote for Donald Trump? Because he's dead wood. And right now, the situation in, in, in the United States is the center to the point where we need to sort of walk away from the government. Like a lot of police that are doing, firemen are doing this. You're walking away. And what they're going to do is they're going to fend for themselves. It does allow in the Constitution, the whole purpose of self-defense is to protect people who can't who can't protect themselves. So if you are a policeman and you have a gun, you if you think someone's being robbed or attacked, you can go in and use the force required in order to prevent that attack. You can defend somebody else. But of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that the court's going to see it that way. But of course, right now, I've sort of become kangaroo courts and it's whatever the judge feels like. It, it, it's based on, again, perception. The courts are basically a work. They're a LARP. They're not reality. And unfortunately, Lionel, who's part of the court system, doesn't see this. Most lawyers don't see the work that's going on, the, 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 the LARP that's there. Even though you have Davos, you have the uh, uh, or the, climate, the Climate Change Conference in, 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 in Scotland, Glasgow, those are all works. They're all they're not reality. Uh, I mean, I looked at uh, looking at um, and this is going to be the topic today about uh, uh, the the echo warriors and the religious left. And we go back into this. We go back into history. This has to do with a TV show I was watching, set in the late 1800s, and they were in a women's prison, and the women were in prison for burying the wrong person for you know it, it's things that we would consider to be silly today. But back then, who you married mattered because they had a, a this was from the Catholic Church, was from, the, from the Protestants, it was, you know, it wasn't, this was sort of considered to be the, the Christian ethic, although if you go back and actually read the gospel, you'll find nothing like this in the gospel. The gospel is always about forgiveness, about he who, let, let he is who, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. That's right from Christ. And yet, these Protestants, who the, uh, the basically are the Bible thumpers, they, they certainly know their stuff backwards and forth, and they, these uh, you know these Jesuit monks and stuff like that, who are able to, to you know they they know the nuance. So you know you you can't tell a, a Jesuit about uh, uh, about Christian theology because whoa he's so well educated, just like you can't tell the any these socialist friends of his oh you can't say that but well, it's not a plan to kind well just because it's not your plan in terms of the planned economy, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a planned economy. Somebody else is planning the economy. I, I, you, know, <laughs> you know, BlackRock, who would be, uh, BlackRock Capital, they have a plan for the economy. The, the, all the banks have them a plan. And so the rest of what, what happens, they create these works. The labor unions are a work. Who, I went to check to see who did all the... Uh, pension work for the union, the public employees unions, and because they had bought a major television company up here called the Bell Canada, major media platform, and they own it, they, right now in Canada, they own almost the entire dial, 
and it was all done with uh, the pensions of the teachers' union. I mean, well, who did this? Who, did, who was who was taking the pensions of the teachers' union and using them to buy intangible property? Because the property rights of intellectual properties are intangible; they're not real. So, who was doing this? It was BlackRock Capital? And they don't understand. The, the union people don't un seem to understand that they're being ripped off. This is another. Pon they're setting up another Ponzi scheme. This is what's happening with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is another Ponzi scheme. This is how. You know, people wonder why, ah, Elon Musk, look at how much money he has. Well, where did he get it from? Well, he set up a Bitcoin thing, and then all of a sudden it tanked, and all he walked away with all the money. You know, Warren Buffett and and his buddies, they all have these foundations. And I took a look at some of these tax returns of these foundations, and you find that the uh, your, your typical your typical salary for the board members is about $500,000 a year. Plus all the expenses, and so what happens is that yeah, okay, that's all tax free because that's that's what the foundation is done for. It's a tax free, uh, you know, the, I think it's the five one three C in terms of the uh, of terms of the uh, uh, tax code. Uh, but they're basically they're basically tax shelters. They're there to protect the money of the rich. So it doesn't matter what you do in terms of taxing other people oh we've got to tax the rich and you know you know to, to, to pay for the poor you know for the, all these health care programs well, they're not going to do that they're going to attack people tax attack, attack people they're going to tax people who cannot afford a large lawyer they cannot they don't have large foundations and they're going to tax the crap out of them and that's who who are the nouveau riche who are the the bourgeois oh they're the bougies they are the newly rich black people the black america the uh, african-american so who have they hit? They hit people like the DJs and um, Nicki Minaj and all these other people who are now who walk around. Look at my bankroll. Look at my bankroll. Well, okay, the IRS has saw that, and so did most of the big banks on Wall Street. They saw that, and guess what? Oh, you're, you you don't have your money grandfathered into the tax code. You don't have these foundations. You don't have the, the lawyers you need. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take everything you have. Of course, BLM missed all this. You know. And the thing is, is that, you know, one of the things they miss, and this is, again, within history, going back to uh, one of the shows I was watching uh, called Murdoch Mysteries, and uh, set in the late 1800s, and uh, this was it's okay, okay to do because they were aiming at the Catholic Church, aiming at Christian, what they call Christian values, although, the, as I said before, the Western Christian values are not Christian. They're pagan. This is why you see the call to war. This is why you see the need to punish. The whole term of punishment, the penit penitence and penitentiary, all comes from the sense of punishing the guilty. That in order to atone for their sins, they have to be punished. They have, it needs this, the, the, a penitence is required. And this is not within the early, this is not within the early Christians. Early Christians were peaceful. They went to their deaths peaceful. They didn't go you know, taking everybody out with them or, or, or saying that this was, uh, you know, wrong and we need to seek revenge revenge, revenge or uh, retribution. They didn't call for the punishment. Christ didn't call for the punishment of the execution of the people who executed. Hey, what did he say? Forgive them, fa forgive them Father, for they know, know, they know not what they do. That's within the gospel. But again, these Bible, Bible thumpers have no clue of this. Just as like the, the academics of Oxford and so on and so forth, who have no clue that he is anthropomor can be anthropomorph anthropomorphic, meaning that he is referring to the species of man. They come up with the term Z. Apparently, this this whole concept of anthropomorphic man is so far beyond them that they had to make up a well, basically a German term Z. Did you go to Z star? Yes, we went to Z star. <laughs> they they're, they're German. <laughs> And then and the stuff is, again, this is what a LARP is. A LARP is this role play. It's supposed to be reality, but it really, in many cases, this is what uh, Lionel can't figure out, what, what happens to these uh, to these uh, highly educated people. That's because they, they live in a fantasy world. They create their own reality. This is exactly what a LARP is. <laughs> I mean, go look at people who were at the Renaissance Fair or go to any anime convention to see the people who, not only dress up, but actually believe that they're within the 
within the within the scene themselves that, that they live this character that they created. And you see, you begin to see that the, what's happened is that the insane asylum no longer has walls, and that people are walking around who would normally, at some point in time, considered to be fundamentally insane, and then you know, unfortunately, locked up. But that's not the reality, and I don't agree with locking up people because they have particular mental health problems. There are, should be ways, particularly through the. This is what I'm talking about: reimagining the police force. There should be a security force that will that has the capacity because again, it's not anything specific. All you have to do is listen to the person, talk to them. You can talk a person out of their schizophrenic episode, but the cops don't know how to do this. If they were trained to listen, if they were trained to not, you know, respect my authority. In other words, they're not Eric Cartman. Eric Cartman, you know, respect my authority. If they're not doing that, if that's not their fundamental training. Which we saw in uh, we saw in um, Abu Ghraib. Well, what did we see in Abu Ghraib? We saw uh, Dr. Philip Zabato's uh, Stanford prison experiment, and Stanford, his prison experiment in 1970 had no concept of race in it whatsoever. These people were randomly chosen, and as soon as you give these people authority at the lower level. They become dangerous. They become the Hitlers. They become the people who will enforce draconian rules. And because they live by these rules, this is good, this is what gives them stature. That gives them their sense of being. And the, just just as we're talking about religious and, and the religious morals, it doesn't mean that that the and, and the belief in these morals, which comes from a fake form of Christianity. And you go back and study, then you can see this. But this is what happens with these so-called uh, warriors, these these leftist warriors. And again, left. I'm talking left. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the work. I'm talking about the rhetoric. People believe this rhetoric, and these here's where you become the blind agent. These warriors are blind agents. You have agents in there who are control. Some of them may be blind. Some of them may not be blind. But they just have that sense of control, and they're in. in they allow the sort of rogue behavior. <clears throat> and this is what you see in Greenpeace. It was, you know, they always pop up on, on, on Instagram. This is where I see it. And you go follow them. Instagram, <clears throat> Greenpeace has this new warship called uh, the Sea Shepherd. And it shows them ramming and sinking uh, these uh, illegal fishing ships. Well, who are these illegal fishing ships? You look at all of them. They're all Asians. They're all Chinese. Well, we assume they're Chinese anyways. But at no point in time do you ever see the Sea Shepherd going after the massive trawlers that provide food, provide, provide for Red Lobster, for Highliner Fish Company, the major corporation that, that supplies uh, Highliner with its fish. They don't go after any ships like that. They go after the smaller Asian ones. You think that's, that's not racism? It is racism. But they are justified in what they're doing because they are eco-warriors. Well, their belief is in the environment. Their belief that the environment is going to collapse. And so, therefore, they are now entitled. This is what you have Earth Rangers and uh, uh, Captain Planet there to, to protect the planet from evildoers and so on. So they've turned it into a religion. And, of course, these religious nuts... Take it to the point where they believe now that they have the moral authority to go in and attack other people because they don't believe the way they're supposed to believe. Of course, that's the left understanding. If you are not of the proper uh, leftist understanding, the liberal understanding, then you are spewing hate. And it's the job of the, of the, of the liberal leftist, the social justice warrior, to go in and physically attack you to prevent you from saying, from spewing hate. This is what we saw with the whistleblower. The whistleblower wasn't concerned about anything specific other than people spewing hate on the internet. Which hate? The hate that the left identify as hate speech. And if anything that they view goes against their values, their morality, are, you now become the enemy and they have the right to attack you. These are religious people. This is the religious left. And they have no problems attacking you 
because they now have a religious morality <laughs> to attack you. This is they are as crazy as any uh, you know Protestant or Catholic. I mean, the Protestant Catholic got their 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 sort of existence as long with the, the Sunni Sunni uh, Muslims. The Shia were fu fundamentally different. They weren't like the Sunnis. The Sunnis were warriors. They were barbarians. Same thing with the uh, the Catholics, and same thing with the Protestants. They all had a belief from their religion, and this was the Western Christian religion that it was okay to go in and kill your neighbor in the name of God, in the name of some holy issue, some moral issue. And the morality can be anything you wanted it to be. And so what happens is you have, from 1000 AD on, you have all this warfare. Of course, for the Gnostics, this is great. Because in the Gnostic whole understanding of the Hegelian dialectic, what do you need for progress? You need a conflict. You need a violent conflict. This is what comes up in Karl Marx. Karl Marx didn't invent the, the, the violent conflict or the, the, nature, the nature of revolution. It came from it came from Hegel. Voltaire was the perfect puppet to sell an idea that would cause conflict. Oh, you, you people are right. You know, God shouldn't be involved in these different things. There's too much religion, uh, too too much of a, a high moral fiber there that is killing people. You need to go reform the system, bring the high people up down to a proper level. You need to cut them down. This is what you we read through uh, uh, Voltaire and these. Look at his reformer and follow that line of history. This is, is exactly what you'll see. You'll see these reformers emerge. You'll see the, the concept of, of conflict to resolve these moral issues that the reformers say need to be resolved. And again, it's, once again, it's based in their belief. They try to bring in science to their to to their rescue to say, oh, this is science. But they did they failed at that. I mean, the science that they came up with. Stated in nineteen in eighteen nine eighteen nineties that to say that women were feebly minded and need to be taken care of. And so they actually had reformatories, they call them reformatories at that, for women who were not behaving properly. And parents and you know husbands would commit their wives or, or daughters and so on and so forth to these institutions in order to correct their behavior. But they were basically and fundamentally prisons. And they operated as such. And what do you see in there? You see uh, uh, Dr. Phillips and Bartles, you see the Stanford prison experiment in there. You see that behavior. You see that behavior emerge. And you see that the doctors, even when there were women doctors are in there, in there, having no problems sterilizing the, the defective people, sterilizing so that the that the moral decay does not spread throughout society, that the, the seeds uh, are not sown to such a degree, so they sterilize them, and th that seed ends there. The bad seed. This is what they're talking about. The bad seed. Well, this is it. This is where it comes from, and this is well before Hitler. So what happens? Hitler comes in at the end. There's so many failures that they try try to to heal society with the humanist value of science, and it failed. And, then, and of course, what happens? You have quantum physics emerge. Quantum, quantum physics emerged around the same time, and it was particularly with Planck. And the whole concept of deterministic science, that the science knew everything, and that mathematics was the absolute truth, it all collapsed with Planck. And as Einstein went to go try to put these pieces back together, he further, you know, as he tugged on that string, the whole tapestry of this, this work, this fiction of science knows all, that science is the ultimate truth unraveled further. <laughs> it became more of a mess. It fell apart even more. Then as the people try to rush in and try to fix this stuff up, well, along comes Enrico Fermi, uh, just a little bit before, uh, and he's the one who got the fission reaction to go. And, uh, in 1945, uh, with the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the people saw the atomic bomb for the first time, and the problem was is that this atomic bomb was not supposed to exi exist according to theoretical work. This was Einstein here. They all swore up and down. It's not going to work. The mathematics isn't there. 
it was an experimentalist, Enrico Fermi, who got it to go. Everything else surrounding it, Oppenheimer and all these other people, all these other characters, were works. They were there to distract people away from what was actually going on. That was the creation of the atomic bomb. Well, since then, we've now got the cell phones, we've got all these different things, not based on theoretical concept and mathematical proof, but rather by experimentation. These are things that they stumble into. This is why a place like IBM or, or, or NASA needs so many engineers and scientists because they don't know what's going to come out, which scientist is going to produce the right thing. And the thing is, more often than not, it's not one scientist. One scientist will, go, will create a little fragment here. Another scientist will create another fragment over there. So what happens, you take all these fragments, and to get all these fragments together, become the space program. But again, they hide this from the public. This is, this is the, they don't want to have science being looked at as, oh, it's just well, trial and error. You know, let, let's see what happens here, and hopefully we don't kill, each other, kill ourselves. But that's a lot of, a lot of what, what, what it is. It's experimental. It, 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 it's, ex, it's exploration. They don't know what's going to I don't know what's going to happen out here. I sit out here, I, you know, do my work bit by bit, day by day. Uh, and it's taken me years to put together an understanding that I have now. I'm not at the end of it. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near the beginning of it. <clears throat> this is why it's middle school for life because you're the, with infinite knowledge. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you gain or, 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 or bring in as pieces of the puzzle and eventually put together. You're still infinitely far away, so you never move forward. You never achieve the expert stage. But of course, most of these people in ac the academic society want to keep their academic world together, and so they create the work of the academic expert. As soon as you hear a person say that they're an expert at X, Y, and Z, you're listening to a person who's closed their mind and said, "I know everything about this." And of course, the course who want to keep their world together will accept this. As reality because it doesn't conflict with their sense of reality so everybody in the higher levels are in a LARP live action role play and for some reason these eco warriors these religious left don't seem to understand this they're it with they're with deeply within the matrix they're being herded and they're ineffective at this I mean look look at all the results that were produced produced at God at Davos at, at, about Davos and in this case Glasgow, nothing happened. Greta Thunberg got up there and did her thing and did her bit, and nothing. It was more blah 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 blah, and that was it. And the thing is, they all flew in on their, flew in on their private jets. Everybody else has to take public transport, tra tra public transportation, but they have private jets. They have they have limousines. They have drivers. They have they have everything. It's just for the for the. And this is what you see with you see with the masks. Look at the, look at look at the the VMAs and all these other shows. The princes and the princesses, the royalty, the media royalty included, uh, no masks. The service down below, the photographers and, and the, the personal assistant all had masks on. Does that t that picture tells you what's going on? But again, you'll never see this reality in the news because the news is. Political theater is not real. It's a work. It's a LARP. All these different things. And if you want to sit down and target these things, you have to make sure that you're, you're doing the right thing. You're choosing the right target. And I'll tell you right now, violence is not the way to do this. Because violence is how the, the establishment sells the secure police state. You want to see all that violence out there? You see it on the news? Well, you want that there? Oh, well, you, you, you're going to need the police. We're going to... Reimagine the police. What are, gonna, what, what, what are they going to reimagine the police as? Stormtroopers. You're going to get paramilitary police out of this. Anyways, uh, that's it for tonight. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow night. We'll see what happens. We are Cyborg Alpha. Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.